Okay, this is Roger once again. I do research, so don't come at me with like, this is all climate change is nonsense. Let me tell you something. Climate is changing drastically and fast. And why? Why is it changing? Well, let's talk about that. This is really what's going on in our solar system. Our stuff is spinning around the arm of the galaxy, so our solar system is flying through space. This out here is not nothing. It's not a vacuum of nothing. Everything out there is completely packed with light particles. We don't see them because they're the same particles of light that are coming from our sun towards us and going in every other direction and every other luminous body does the same thing. We scrub through those particles creating friction off the side of our solar system on every scrubbing body. It just has to happen. It scrubs into the particles that we are crushing into. Totally misunderstood. This is what's going on in our galaxy. Everything is spinning and all of these things have to force themselves through whatever's in front. Sometimes there's very little, sometimes there's a ton of stuff. Just like a wrench. And it's scrubbing against we're spinning this way, but there's all kinds of stuff in a way. So we're forcing our stuff into that stuff, and that stuff pushes our stuff back. It's nothing but stuff against stuff, push to shove. This is the nature of our universe. Everybody emits something, or absorbs something, or a little of both. Well, the sun emits primarily a ton of radiation. What is that radiation? It's light primarily and very small particles, electrons, small molecules and when they leave they just go flying out of there. We scrub through them because that is spinning, we're spinning, we're scrubbing against their particles. There's no iron core inside the earth or there might be, who cares? What is creating our magnetic field is our electrons scrubbing against these electrons. If you understand an a, a, um, electric motor, it's fully understood, exactly identical. It's nothing more than, this would be a generator actually, we'd be generating electricity from this scrubbing electricity into us. We are absorbing electricity identical to what a battery would do, a capacitor, and it's sucking electrons in, and they can't leave. They think we're going to just go off into space and have a nice time. No, they are forced down against us because we are crushing in. They crush as we force ourselves through the system. It crushes as we rub against everything that's crushing against us. It crushes more. It's not that this is no big mystery here. It's just to think about it a little bit. It's absolutely amazing that this is just forgotten about. I'll forget about it. And then they think what's going on is there's what they call a blanket wrapped around the earth of carbon and hydrogen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, um, uh, CO2, you know, carbon dioxide. And they say, oh, that's a, a greenhouse gas. It won't let the particles go out. No, that's ridiculous. It, it's, it's just puffing up our atmosphere like a pressurizing the whole thing. And the more pressure, the more heat. It's just like putting a can of soup in a boiling water. Sooner or later, it's going to explode. And we are ready to explode right now. Okay, my friends, it's time to really talk about the real problem with 5G is the conversion of the molecules into expansive particles which is nothing more than creating more pressure on our atmosphere which is nothing more than global warming. It's going to be an absolute disaster when it gets completely fully rolled out. I can't see any other possibility. When you turn water into steam, which is exactly what 5G does, even though we won't see it as boiling because it will be absorbed by the atmosphere, but it won't take long to pressurize. 10,000 cubic feet at 212 degrees, 50 gallons of water. 50 gallons of water fits in a pretty good sized bucket, but 50 gallons takes up so much size. When you put it up at 212, it's 10,000 cubic feet. Boom! Explosion. 
This I did this I, I did this 50 years ago. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. And I did the actual work on it to see what the difference was between hot and cold and the temperature changes between you know uh, stuff that had salty waters and stuff that had um, acidy waters, which means a difference in the 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 uh, atomic structure. And it always ended up. You see, this is calories and you know all the different electrons. It always, 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 always ended up being electrical energy in electrons. That's how it would do. heat is nothing more than electron. And I did the, oh, I did it all. So I did all of this stuff too here. Where this was all about converting. Um, you know, all the different laws, and, you know, trust me, I understand this stuff. If anybody want to talk to me about it, I'll talk to them. I understand it better than anybody else on the face of the planet right now, because they don't understand electron flood theory. Case closed. Okay, so, Roger, what is electron flood theory? Well, here it is right here. Bohr model says you've got one gigantic proton in the center of for hydrogen and one tiny little electron. And that's all there is, and it's crazy, because there's all kinds of isotopes for hydrogen, and there's th hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, forget this, <laughs> does not work. Now, electron flood theory, which is my theory, says that hydrogen, the nucleus, is not made of one gigantic proton, it's made of 1838 or 1840, somewhere around there, Electrons. And you say, whoa, 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 what's the electrons doing in the, in the nucleus? Well, electron is totally different than what you thought. This is what an electron is. It has a negative uh, potential, absolutely, and that is the part that is con con concussive, and, and I will show you this in a second. There's no question what I'm saying is correct. The other side of it, of the electron, which is a two-sided particle, it's a dipole, has the dark matter, dark matter, no interaction whatsoever, and I will show you that. Two of them back to back, which are electrons, make up a photon, I will show you that. When they concuss, they explode, the dark matter separates, I will show you that. What we are going to see is this right here, electron flood, elemental subatomic particles. What are those elemental particles? They're what they call muons, which is going to be the black ball, and electron neutrino showers, which is going to be these bright, brilliant showers of white particles. We see them, this is what the photons are, in red and green, and they spin, and they create a wave in front of themselves. It's just the nature of light. The particles way back here, the wave is out in front. Pulsed red laser goes boop, 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 but there's pulse, pulse, pulse. So wave, 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 particle, particle, particle. That's what's happened. And here's what they happen, what happens. When those boxes of particles come in here to this venturi, the little black balls just get away. They get the hell out of the way. The white ones explode like an atomic bomb, and that is right here. I think we can get free energy. Atoms are nothing more than zones of stability. And the zones of stability are nothing more than piles of electrons. And at certain quantities, they shake until they lock in. And at that frequency, they are stable. I can show all of these things in little tiny experiments with, with salt and magnets. I'll show you them right now. Okay, this is the Royal Institution. Well, what that means is there's something wrong with the standard model. Yes, there is, because lepton universality has been broken. And I showed this, and a year ago, I commented, I have experimental photos. Nobody's ever, I was the one that clicked myself, I liked it myself. So nobody's ever showed any interest, but absolutely, she's right. There is something wrong with the standard model. It doesn't work. All right, see, here it is right here new boson appears and they, they're using nuclear decay. They're just finding them saying, wow, what the hell is this? Well, I showed where it came from. It comes from light, which destroys the standard model. Now, here they're going saying, that we, well, we figured this out back in 2015. Well, nobody's ever been talking about it until just one year ago, at the exact same time this place talks about finding this extra particle Everybody did because I've been posting about it for five or six years, and then all of a sudden they decided, well, we got to do something. 
So they say essentially scientists took lithium and shot protons in it, and then they saw these particles show up and they had no idea what they were, but that was six years ago. Well, it's been rattling around since then. Everybody's starting to talk about it now. Friday, uh, December 2020, dark excitons hit the spotlight. Well, that's because I've been showing them. That's why. Nobody else showed them before I showed them. And nobody else is showing them the way I'm showing them. And the only way I'm showing them is because Rod Warren accidentally found that they are emitted from a Venturi. And I, I jumped on it, and I just kept on it for five or six years now. Finally, they're starting to pay attention. Even CERN. All right, here, I find this extremely interesting. All of a sudden, LHC as a photon collider, not a proton collider. Well, I've been showing photons collide in a Venturi. Well, guess what they discovered? Exactly the same thing, only they just accidentally found a couple of protons crushing, making a Venturi of its own, spitting out the particle that I showed. <laughs> so they say it just happens accidentally. They're using a hundred billion particles. <laughs> so they just see this, all this debris. We're using light. Two particles. That's why we get perfect shots of everything. They don't have any shots of anything that I can see. See what these people are doing? They're bouncing electrons off of semiconductor. So this, this is what's happening here. They're shooting them up in, through a venturi, exactly what we're doing, and then they see they're finding dark and bright exc excitron. There's no sense for them to shoot down here and then force this back up. It doesn't make any sense at all. What they should be doing is shooting straight up through and really sending them like we're sending them. All right, these are the dark and the bright excitons. And what do they do? As they come forward, they were originally inside of a wave, way back here in the wave. But because they control a magnetic region, they create a wave in front, but the particle's here. As it approaches Venturi, it accelerates, as we saw, and then they, the particles from that black and white particle, they actually separate right at the Venturi. Here's the separation event. All right, let's see red electrons. Here we go. Now, they're coming in. Here's what's happening. They're coming in, and they don't have any real definition, and then they start to approach the Venturi where they're going to explode, and they display themselves in that box right there. And the green ones do the same thing. Uh, green electrons, here they are in a trail. You see them? Same, same particle, only they're more more um, impactful, let's put it that way. See, they're starting to impact, and then they're starting to explode apart, and then the black ones just go away from the white ones. And that, we saw that very, very ele elegantly right here. All right, there's the impact. The black ones say, we're not going that way. They say, we'll get out of the way then. We're going. They go, the white ones, and the black ones go, we'll just get out of the way. You see it? And they have no effect on each other. The black ones can be right up touching each other like that. But the white ones, as soon as they get next to each other, they want to go apart. That's why you get this, what they call the interference patterns. These are not interference. These are repulsion patterns. These are pushing these away, those are pushing those away. It's push to shove, push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. Plus, the light as it comes through here is not coming through here as a single straight particle. It's a spinning magnetic ball of influence. Sometimes that ball spins off this way. Sometimes it spins under and goes off this way. Sometimes it comes right through the center. It's just the nature of how it hits the Venturi. But no matter what it does, that ball has to compact itself. When it does, the black ones get away, and that is where you get that differentiation in between what they call the electron, um, oh boy, I can't remember right now, the, um, the part of the, 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 hold on one second. Okay, what I was referring to before was the leptons, and really just take this away from it, is that I showed you the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, which are that dark and white particle. And then, when they separated, they become these gauge bosons. And look at the difference in power. 80 giga electron volts. These come in at 2.2 electron volts, almost nothing. 0.17 mega electron volts. It's 80 giga electron volts when it turns white. That's what I'm taking away. If I'm wrong, 
Somebody correct me. They're showing it. I agree with them. And if, if this is correct, from this electron voltage up to this electron voltage, it is an enormous increase. And if that can happen by using a Venturi, which is non-invasive, non anything I mean it's, it doesn't do anything other than just sit there it's passive and you could do all kinds of things by varying the distance of the venturi the angle that they're hitting the venturi the angle of the venturi the curve of the venturi the materials of the venturi the distance of the tube of the venturi what surrounds the venturi there's a bazillion things you can do a zillion things more than a zillion I think two zillion exactly